Okay, um, this is the second part of chapter 7.5, the normal approximation to the binomial. Um, you remember we set up the problem before with the idea that calculating binomials is cool, but especially when we have a lot of them to do and the calculations are sort of uh, tricky, we can approximate these rectangles with this normal curve and try to get an estimate or an approximation of how many successes we would expect to get and what the probability of those successes are. And um, again, the complication is this idea of the continuity correction where we're going to add or subtract 0.5 as we do it. So here is um, just a uh, Google spreadsheet that I set up for this ahead of time. Um, and here's our story again. Remember in craps, the game, the dice game that we talked about, a craps is when you roll a seven or an 11. And we're going to say, what if we do it 15 times, right? And that was the example that we had here on this chart. Um, and the probability of getting four of them um, was about 21% uh, as we did that. So we can go ahead and recreate that here. Um, and we just entered that binome dist in, and I already did that. So binome dist of four comma 15 comma 0.2222, um, and we are good to go um, with that. So, um, there we go. Oh, you need that little zero in there. That was my problem. So let me put that in over here. Um, there we go. Um, space looks pretty. Okay. So that's how binome dist works. And um, that's what we did back in chapter six. And the question then would be how can we do that approximation as we do it? So the first thing that we remember was this idea that for the approximation to be reasonable, we want to have NP1 minus P be greater than or equal to 10 as we do that. Um, and if it's not, it'll still work, but it might not be um, as good of an um, approximation as it would be if it were. So we can go ahead and calculate NP1 minus P, right? That's just calculation. So N times P times 1 minus p, it's the same number there, and lo and behold the number is 2.6. And this isn't that sort of math class, but you probably noticed that 2.6 is not greater than 10. So I live on the edge, I know you do too, so let's go ahead and do this problem anyway. So we guess the approximation won't be perfect, but I wonder how close it'll be, and then I'll go ahead and do a regular one with that 150 trials afterwards. 150 makes more sense because that's where you really would start to worry about calculating um, a whole bunch of binomials to do that. So um, let's remember that the average number of successes that we expect is equal to n times p. And again, we got those numbers right here. So n times p is 3.33. And the standard deviation is n times p times 1 minus p square rooted. And I could do that again, but in fact, I already calculated it down here. So I could just take the square root of this number I calculated down here. Yay, spreadsheet. So mean 3.33, standard deviation 1.610. All right, so this over here is the binomial stuff that we already did. So on this side, we're going to start to add uh, these calculations to get this approximation. And the first thing I did, you can see, is that the mean and standard deviation are the same. So I just copied those over from over here. The other thing we need to think about is that continuity correction. What does it mean to be plus or minus in order to get that uh, rectangle instead of just the uh, whole number itself. So if we want to think about four successes, we're going to go between three and a half and four and a half as we do that. That uh, textbook, I mean, this has all these rules. I typically just draw the picture and, you know, kind of eyeball it as I do that. But the idea that between three and a half and four and a half is going to be the approximation for four. Okay. So what we're really calculating then is the probability that x is between those two numbers. Well, we can use the norm disk command that we used last week to try to figure out what that amount is. So we're going to take norm dist of x comma mean comma standard deviation comma one. And that's going to give us that lower portion of it. Then we're going to do it for the second half. 
if I do the dollar signs, I can just drag it down. I can type it in, it's only two, but if I do the dollar signs for the purple and the blue number and keep the orange number where it is, I can do that. And that number is 54%. So thinking back to what we're doing before on this normal approximation, right? First we calculate it for the whole thing. Then we calculate it for um, seven and a half and we subtract off that part. So that we're left with just the area between here. Gosh, I'm bad at drawing. All right, so now that we have those two numbers, all we have to do is subtract them one from the other. So 76% minus 54% gives us 22.44%. And if we compare these two numbers, you see they're not exact. And again, our assumption isn't met, so it's off by a percent and a half, but that's pretty close for something that we said wasn't actually a good approximation. Let's change it now and let's think about 150 trials. And you remember that was my other drawing that I had here. Um, for 15, it looked eh, kind of normal, but for 150, you're like, dude, that looks exactly like the normal distribution. So here we are, I'm gonna make the trials 150. Because we built everything in Excel or in the spreadsheet, everything's gonna calculate itself ahead of time, except for this one, I didn't change this one. So um, instead of thinking about four successes, maybe let's think about um, um, some other number of successes. Let's think about 40 successes. And let's go ahead in here and we'll have to change this to get this to work. Um, so 40 successes. Number of trials is 150. The probability is right there. And the probability of getting 40 successes is 3.24%. Now, the other thing we're going to have to do here is instead of thinking of 35 to 45, we're going to think about 40 and a half down to 39 and a half. Now, again, all the math kind of takes care of itself. So with mean 33 and standard deviation 5, we calculate those two probabilities with norm dist, subtract them and we get 3.33%. So in this case, notice NP1 minus P is greater than 10, so we expect the probability to be pretty close. And in this case, it's off by 0.1%. So one time in a thousand, it would be off, which is a pretty good approximation as we do that. Where this gets to be really good is in cases where you would have to um, think about less than or equal to or greater than or equal to. That is, we're not looking for a single binomial, but we're looking for a whole bunch. So for instance, if you play craps and uh, you win, um, you get about um, you know, your money back. So the question would be, you know, what would be the probability you get 40 or fewer craps? So instead of just thinking about the one example where you had 40, we're gonna add up all of these from 40 all the way down to zero. And I have that already calculated here, which is 9180 as we do that. If we think about the chart, we'd look for 40 and we'd scribble all the numbers as we did that. Okay, in the calculation, we could actually um, just go ahead and add those all up. And I'm gonna go ahead and do that. And we get the value of uh, 91.8%. So that is, there's a 91% chance that you're going to get 40 or fewer craps out of 150 rolls. So 150 rolls, you're going to have 40 or fewer 7 or 11s as you do that. Well, now, instead of thinking about 39 and a half as our lower, we're going to think about zero as our lower. And if we do that, right, you can now see that this calculates it pretty quick. Right, if we're thinking about using the table, we now did two calculations instead of using the table where we had to do 41 calculations. So you can see why not that long ago, the normal approximation was amazing because this idea that you'd have to do that binomial calculation, remember each one of those had n choose k, so you're gonna do you know, 40 choose, I'm sorry, 150 choose 40 times uh, 2222 to the 40th power times 0 0.7777 to the 110 power, and you're going to do that 40 times. Gosh, that right, that is kind of ridiculous. So you could see why, again, even in the 90s, back when I was in school, um, doing this normal approximation was really um, magical 
and people in engineering, people who work for NASA, people who are doing uh, bridge calculations, any of those sorts of things, um, were using that approximation because calculating the exact number was just uh, too, too tedious to do. Um, and in fact, they talk about in the uh, hidden figures where um, they talk about the women who uh, did all the math for NASA um, binomials, one of the things that they were calculating by hand as they were doing that. So you can see again, here we are within, uh, what is that, 0.2% um, of the exact number. Okay, so that's the normal approximation of the binomial. Um, in the lab this week, we're going to do this assignment uh, together. We're going to walk through some of these probabilities, think about how to calculate them. Um, in the spreadsheet terms, as long as you remember the two commands, binom dist, which is how we calculate binomials, and norm dist, which is how we calculate normal distributions, um, the rest of it is just the spreadsheet stuff, thinking about how to get the right number in the right place. Um, once you make one of these kind of pretty ones like I have, you could use it for all of your homework, but you could also just walk through it and do it over and over um, again. And so um, anyway, that's the normal approximation of the binomial. And when it works, it works amazingly well. And um, you can again see why um, not that long ago and up until just the last few years, um, the normal approximation was really important. So all right, see you in class.